The life is in the blood. What does that mean? Talking about Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. Check it out with me. Come on. Shalom, my friends. Deborah asked me to uh, do an Odeote study on Leviticus 17.11, which reads in the Hallelujah Scriptures, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. Now, I'm going to take a look at uh, the word life that's being used in English. I'm going to take a look at the word flesh. And then we're going to take a look at the word blood. And uh, I believe it was maybe my previous video recently. I was talking about how when I was looking into like what is the soul. uh, What I found was in the original Aramaic Hebrew. uh, The word is nefesh. And is often, you know, sometimes it's translated as life. Sometimes it's translated as soul, and um, I concluded that the soul is uh, one's living experience, like a record of your living experience, like a book and a record of your living experience throughout this lifetime on through eternity. And um, wherever you see, let's say if you're reading in the Word, wherever you see the word soul, If you replace that with a living experience or the record of one's living experience, you'll see that that always does make sense. Now here, um, they're saying that the life of the flesh is in the blood. So what does that mean? Uh, First of all, let's take a look at the uh, Aramaic Hebrew word that's uh, being translated here in Leviticus 17.11 as life, and that is the word nefesh, Strong's number H5315, and they say that nefesh means, among other things, they say a breathing creature. Sometimes they say it refers to The dead? Ghost? You know, the word ghost doesn't even appear anywhere in the word, but Strong's is uh, making allusions to it. Sometimes it has to do with pleasure. Sometimes it's translated as himself or myself. As usual, the dictionaries and Strong's, they're all over the place because (laughs) they see these Aramaic Hebrew words being used in a lot of different ways and they don't know how to how to deal with that when interpreting it interpreting it into English or any other language for that matter. And um, you know, this is why the Odeote is so cool. Because it just takes away all that stuff. So um we're looking at the word uh nefesh, often translated as life and soul. Um but we have noon pe sheen. Nun, ne, pe, fe, sheen, sh, ne, fesh. As I've said before, when you get to know the uh, the audio, the letters, and their pronunciations, it's not too difficult to uh, uh, take a word like nefesh and know that it would be nun, pe, sheen. Noon is the uh, picture of the seed, and the good seed or the bad seed, depending on the word we're looking at and the context that it comes into. Noon has to do with life, perpetual, unstoppable motion, has to do with heirs and offspring of either the good or 
the bad seed. There's only two seeds in this world, the good seed, Yahshua, the bad seed, the uh, Nekash, the shining one, Satan. So, the heart of the word is pay. A uh, picture of a mouse has to do with speaking, praising, being on the edge of something. And then, finally, we have sheen, picture of two front teeth. It has to do with uh, cutting into two, separating things. So, the nefesh of the flesh is in the blood. I would say the soul, you know, okay, life, you know, the living experience is in the blood. You know, we know that just, you know, logically speaking, what's in the blood? <laughs> your ancestral uh, heritage is in your blood. Your ancestors' character traits, their living experiences, uh, they're all mixed in with the blood. You know, I've often looked at just say there's two children born into uh, a family. They have the same blood. Two different children, same blood. One of them turns out to be uh, very kind and sweet. The other one is very mischievous and maybe even wicked and hurtful. Why? They come from the same blood, the same parents, the same household, the same up upbringing the same training? Why is it that two children raised in the same household with the same principles, same parents, and the same bloodline, why, can they, why is it that they can be so different? My personal uh, belief about that, that I've come up with after many years of study, and I grew up in a household with six kids, so I, maybe that's why I thought about it so much. But... Um, my personal belief is that as a very young child, infancy on to, they say we learn most of what we learn in the first three years of our life, so maybe in those first three years. The, the blood, all these character traits of the ancestral lineage is going on in both of these children. One child sees a particular nature in itself, that it likes, and, and it focuses on that. The other child sees other traits that it grabs onto for various reasons and goes in a different way and becomes more like, you know, great uncle Harry, where this one uh, was much more like, you know, Aunt Sarah or great, 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 great grandfather John or something. The soul is in the blood. The uh, nefesh of the flesh is in the blood. Uh, so what is nefesh talking about? It's talking about the seed, nun, the unstoppable motion of that seed, whether it is good, the good seed or the bad seed. And again, you know, those two children, one could latch on to the good seed. The other one might latch on to the bad seed and become uh, a wicked child where the other one becomes a loving child who uh, is more like Yeshua. The seed is Nun, but then we go to pay, and that points at the mouth. And what this, what this uh, person speaks about, who this person praises, and again, it has to do with the seed. Good seed or bad seed? The good seed is going to speak goodness and going to praise Elohim. The bad seed is going to speak darkness and will praise darkness. Or will speak about the world and will praise the world. Could be uh, many things. And then sheen, the two front teeth, has to do with dividing. So, the nefesh, the life, the soul, a person's living experience, from Elohim's point of view is all about which seed and the division, good seed or bad seed. It, that, I think it's as simple as that. So you might say the seed of the flesh is in the blood. The living experience of the flesh or the person is in the blood. 
the nefesh, the seed, what it speaks, and which side of the camp it's been put to after being divided, sheen. Okay, our next slide is um, for the word flesh, and we're talking about the Aramaic Hebrew word bashar. It's um, from Strong's number H1320, bashar, often translated into English as flesh, and Strong's refers to the body, the flesh, the skin. Sometimes it refers to being fat. Sometimes it refers to being lean. Sometimes it refers to mankind. Sometimes it refers to nakedness. Again, uh, my friends, you know, this is why it's so good that we do these studies. Whenever there's a word, you know, like Deborah, you know, she's looking at the life of the flesh is in the blood. Obviously, your life, flesh, blood. What Can we clarify this? Because the English, you know, it gets you all over the place. Um, just like Strong's, they see Bashar, and sometimes it's referring to skin, uh, the body, flesh. Sometimes somebody's fat. Sometimes they're lean. Sometimes it's talking about mankind. Sometimes it's referring to nakedness. Depending on where Bashar appears and what context it's in, it points at a lot of different things because the Aramaic Hebrew cannot be painted in the same, with the same brush as English or French or Spanish or German or any other language. And again, naturally, we, you know, we have to read in English. Most of us here do. That's the language we understand. It's a good thing. Uh, we go to the Word and, um, you know, we know that the life of the flesh is in the blood. But we can, when we see a statement like that and we want to understand more about it, here's where we can grow in our understanding and look at this with the mind of Yeshua and, uh, and dig in a little deeper. So now let's look at Bashar. Forget what Strong says. Forget what the dictionaries say. We, we have our own understanding when we read the life of the flesh is in the blood. We can put that all together. But now we looked at life and, and we've taken it from the standpoint of nefesh. Now let's look at the flesh, the life of the flesh. That's the nefesh of the bashar. What is the audio going to tell us about bashar? It's beit, sheen, resh. Beit, ba, sheen, sh, resh, rr, <laughs> ba, shar. Bashar. Beit talks about a house. Uh, it's a picture of a house. Actually, it's a picture of the floor plan of a tent. Pitch your tent with Elohim. <laughs> uh, it refers to Yahshua and to a house, literal, as well as one's physical body, your bloodline, uh, such as the house of David, the house of Dawid. Uh, this is talking about his bloodline. But it's also talking about your body, your physical body as well. It talks about your family. So, um, Bashar, first of all, is pointing at your house, whether it's your physical body or your bloodline. Actually, both, because in the Aramaic Hebrew way of thinking, it's not either or like it is in the West. It's all-encompassing. It is your body, as well as your bloodline, as well as your family. The heart of the word, sheen, picture of two front teeth. We just covered that one. It has, really has to do with um, cutting and dividing. Yeshua said, I did not come to bring peace, but to cause division, sheen, to divide, to cut and divide. And then, uh, finally, resh, picture of a man's head. It's talking about your headship and your thoughts. If your headship is Elohim, you know, we're, we're almost repeating what we looked at with Nefesh. If your headship is Elohim, your thoughts are good thoughts. If uh, your headship is the world or darkness or, you know, uh, anything other than Elohim, then your thoughts are going to be filled with darkness and confusion. So, the nefesh of the Bashar, 
this nefesh, the seed, and what someone speaks about of the Bashar, of the the body, the bloodline, and uh, the family. Uh, again, having to do with your headship, the division, either your body, your bloodline, your family is of the good seed or it's of the bad seed. Uh, either your 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 flesh, your bloodline, uh, your family is of the light or it's of the darkness. So, so far we're talking about the life of the flesh, the nefesh of the Bashar. It's really all talking about the fact that someone is either in the light or in the darkness is in the blood. Now let's go to our third slide for blood. It's the word dam. Dalit mem. Da m. Dam. Now, Strong's number H1818. They say uh, it's blood. Blood guilt. Blood thirsty. Innocent. What? <laughs> you see how it goes? It always gets all disjointed. That's because they're seeing Dom used in all these different ways. They don't know what to do with that. And um, that's just because the Aramaic Hebrew is painted with a different brush than English is. That's all. So anyway, let's look at Dom. This is often translated as blood. We have Dalit. We have Mem. Dalit is a picture of a door. Yeshua is the door. It has to do with movement back and forth between that door, between this world and the kingdom of the Father, the Melchut of the Father. It has to do with the four dimensions of space and time. Mem, picture of water. Water is the word that washes us clean. It has to do with blood, the blood of Yeshua that purchases us and saves us. And, you know, once again, with Dalit, has to do, you know, the door is Yeshua and movement back and forth between that doorway, between this world and the Malchut of Yahuwah, the kingdom, and this world. It's, you know, uh, that division thing is going on again. The blood, let's say they're interpreting Dom into uh, English as the word blood, the father's definition of Dom is really his son, the door. Which side of that door are people on? Dalit and Mem. Are, uh, the, are they being washed by the word or not? Are they purchased by the blood of his son or not? The whole picture, the nefesh of the Bashar is in the Dam. The living experience of a particular person is in Yeshua. The living experience, the nefesh, of a particular person, Bashar, is in the Dam. It's, uh, it's, it's in the blood and how how that person is, uh, what, what choices that person is making with the blood that's, that's flowing through them. Are they latching on to the good seed or the bad seed? I think that, I think that finalizes it, my friends. I hope I made that clear for you. The nefesh, the living experience of the Bashar, of the person is in the dam. It's in the bloodline. But you know, it's not it's not as simple as the bloodline because as we talked about, our bloodline, every one of us, our bloodlines go all the way back to Adam in various ways. And going all the way back through there, 
there are, um, the, you know, in our DNA, there are personality traits of all our ancestors. And like I said before, you know, you have two children, same blood, same house, same upbringing. One chooses the DNA of darkness. The other one chooses the DNA of light. One is wicked. The other one's good. Jacob, Esau, Isaac, Ishmael. So, <laughs> that's as far as I can go with that. <laughs> I hope this has been a better heart to you, my friends. Shalom. <laughs> But you refuse to dance